Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in God's house this morning. This Sunday in Lent is often known as a joy Sunday, a Sunday of joy. Why would this be a Sunday of joy? Because our Savior did all his work of salvation for us. It is by grace we have been saved. And no matter what's going on in our lives, we always have that joy in Christ Jesus, our Savior. So we begin our worship this morning with a beautiful hymn, What Grace Is This? God bless our worship. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. We have come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from earth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that we deserve to be punished for our evil deeds, but we ask you graciously to cleanse us from all sin and to comfort us with your salvation. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Lord God is unsurpassingly gracious to us. He was also gracious to the Israelites, too, as he gave them a cure from the venomous snakes. From Numbers chapter 21, beginning with verse 4. They set out from Mount Hor along the road to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became very impatient along the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Look, there is no food, there is no water, and we are disgusted by this worthless food. The Lord sent venomous snakes among the people, and the snakes bit the people. As a result, many people from Israel died. The people went to Moses and said, we have sinned because we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed on behalf of the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a venomous snake and put it on a pole. If anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will live. Moses made a bronze snake and put it on the pole. If a snake had bitten anyone, if that person looked at the bronze snake, he lived. This is the word of our Lord. We invite you to join in the singing of Psalm 38. You're welcome to sing the entire song. scripture that our Lord has been merciful to us. By grace he gave us his son, by grace he has given us free and full salvation. 
from Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 4, which will also serve as the sermon text for this morning. The Apostle Paul writes, inspired by the Holy Spirit, But God, because he is rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in trespasses. It is by grace you have been saved. He also raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He did this so that in the coming ages he might demonstrate the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Indeed, it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared in advance, so that we would walk in them. This is the word of our Lord. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Please stand for the gospel. By grace we look to the cross, and we see what Christ Jesus did for us. From John chapter 3, beginning with verse 14. Jesus says, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The one who believes in him is not condemned, but the one who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the basis for the judgment. The light has come into the world, yet people loved the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. In fact, everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light, or else his deeds would be exposed. But the one who does what is true comes toward the light, in order that his deeds may be seen as having been done in connection with God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you. You may be seated as we sing the next hymn, God loved the world so that he gave.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we ponder God's holy word today, we turn to the words of the Apostle Paul, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Dear brothers and sisters in our Lord Jesus Christ, I like to mark anniversaries. I think anniversaries are a time to think back where you've come from and then also also to look ahead too. Today, for many of you, you might realize it is kind of an anniversary for us in our congregation as it is for many others too. It is tomorrow, one year ago, where it was our last, what we might call a normal Sunday, where we didn't know what the next week would bring. The 15th of March was that normal Sunday. By March 18th, the midweek Wednesday service, it was on Facebook. By that next Sunday, Facebook again. By April, onto YouTube. And then finally, slowly, trying to get back into some sense of normalcy. It's an anniversary. So when you look back, what lessons have we learned? What lessons can God teach us? I'm reminded that I am but a mortal. This life on this earth can be so short, so swift, it can quickly be gone. But I am also reminded of how gracious God is to me, to you, to a world of sinners. So today, may we also celebrate the fact that God deserves all the glory, whether in times of trouble or in times of joy. To God be the glory, for he has made us alive and he has saved us by his grace alone. Our Lord Jesus made us alive. You stop and think about what that means for you. The scriptures tell us that I was dead in my trespasses and sins. Only the Holy Spirit through the law can teach me that I am a doomed, condemned creature by nature. And there is nothing that I can do on my own to help me in my helpless situation. The whole human race is doomed because of sin. I deserve God's wrath and punishment for all eternity because of my sin. Even before I was born, even before I breathed my first infant breath, I was a doomed, condemned creature of God's wrath. But then God comes to me through the book of Ephesians and tells me he has made me alive. Alive in Christ Jesus. This kind of life isn't the life that came to you when you were conceived and born in your mother. This is what spiritual life is. We sometimes refer to it as conversion. That God through the gospel has converted me. He's turned me around from being a doomed, condemned creature to one that is now headed for glory because God has forgiven me through his son, Jesus Christ, because God has washed away all my sins in Jesus. God made us alive in Christ Jesus. Maybe put it into perspective like this. Sometimes when I see roadkill on the side of the road, I just want to look away. I don't even want to look at it, it's disgusting. Or do you hear the TV news anchor who says to you and warns you about graphic pictures that are about to be shown in a war zone? Be careful. There's discretion involved here. This is what God should have done with us. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. God should have looked away and forgotten about us and just let us go on to hell. But God didn't look away. God looked at us, and as Paul tells us, God had mercy on us. God is rich in mercy. Another word for mercy is pity. He saw our pitiful, helpless situation, and God looked at us. 
with mercy. But God didn't just look at you. God had the power to revive you, to give you life through his son. When you read through this text again, note what God has done for you. He says he made you alive in Christ. He raised you with Christ. He seated you in glory with Christ in the heavenly realms. Isn't that amazing when you stop to think about it? You have life in Christ. You were raised with Christ. You are seated in heavenly realms already in Christ. That's God's grace at work. God did that all for you. You had nothing to do with that. That's all because God loved you. That's his motivation. Why would he have mercy and pity on people like us? Because scripture says God is great in love. Not because I loved him, but because he loved me. Isn't that astounding? I can look back at a past year of misery and woe upon this earth, and yet I know still to this day that God loves me. And we get to go each day saying, God loves me. God has mercy upon me each and every day of my life. That is good news. God didn't turn his face away from me. He turned his face away from his son as Jesus suffered and died upon the cross, that hellish death there for me. But God's face still shines upon me. He shines upon you with his grace and favor each day. He made you alive. He raised you. He seated you in the heavenly realms. And notice each time he says all three of those things, it's always connected with Christ, with Christ, with Christ. It's all about him, not about us. It's all about him. And just imagine, some of you may be thinking, I'm still living in this world, this world of tears and death. How could it be that Paul would say that I'm seated with Christ in the heavenly realms? Dear friends, by faith we know we're already there. We see it in part by faith now. By sight one day we will be in those heavenly realms. It's as good as if you are already there. That's what scripture is saying. Even though it's a future hope, a certain hope, you're already there in Christ Jesus. What a beautiful picture that is for us. What a reason to rejoice each and every day. To not get caught up in our own miserable circumstances at times and think, woe is me. But to remember what God has done for you in Christ, in Christ, in Christ alone. But God has done something else for you. By grace, he has already saved you. This has all been done by Jesus. He was the innocent one. Every single day of our lives we sin. Jesus is the innocent Lamb of God. Every single step he took, every breath that came from his mouth, everything he did, everything he thought was perfect. And now by grace, by grace alone, God credits Jesus' righteousness to your personal account. When God sees you, he sees Christ and all that Jesus has done for you in living the perfect life, in dying innocently upon the cross, in shedding his blood for you. When God sees you, he sees Jesus and all that Jesus did for you. You know it, and you're convinced of it because God has given you faith to believe in that. Again, faith isn't a little spark of goodness in us. Faith is also a gift from God. To God alone be the glory. God gave you that faith when you were baptized through the water and the word. Faith is completely a gift of God. You are saved by grace through faith 
And this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. God simply loved you because he loved you. Nothing to do with you. Can I share something with you? This past week, I was in a line of people. There was somebody behind me that knew me, and he came up to me. He, he bounced past a couple of people. He wanted to give me something. This is what he gave me from his church. And it's kind of interesting on the back, a very, very striking description of hell and how bad that will be for anybody who enters there. And then it says, do you want some good news? It says, do you want to be saved from going to hell? You know what the remedy they give on this card is? Do you want to be saved from going to hell? The next three words, pray this prayer. Now you may think, well, that's, that's innocent enough, isn't it? But any time you begin to add a work into your salvation, you take away from grace, from grace alone. By grace alone you are saved. It's not your praying. It's not your prayers of repentance that save you. It is not your abstinence. It is not your decision for Jesus. In any of those things you take away from the glory of the cross and what Jesus did for you. This insipid stuff, this watered down gospel is no gospel at all. Dear friends, when you're thinking about your salvation, don't be looking in faith to yourself thinking, do I have a strong enough faith? Is my faith strong enough? Your faith points you to one place and one place alone. That's Jesus. It's the cross. And when I might have doubts in me, when my feelings throw me into consternation, this is the one thing that is certain to me. It is that Jesus died for me and Jesus rose again. Those three things I mentioned earlier about being made alive again, rising again, and being seated in the heavenly realms, that already happened to Jesus. And now Jesus gives those gifts to me. It's not a future hope, it's a certainty. And it's all by grace. Jesus did it for us. Oh, and then we look at the last part here. By grace, God created you. The word in the Greek here, it says that he created you. It's that idea that you were made out of nothing. Your spiritual well-being didn't come from you. God, by his powerful word, who created all things by his powerful word, also created faith in your heart to understand and to relish and to cherish grace. Grace that he has shown to you and to me. You are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now we may begin to think, well, all the good things that I do, that's me. It's all about me. It's all my abilities. It's all my work. It's all my labor. Everything about you and me is still wrapped up in that word, grace. God made you, God gave you your abilities, and oh, by the way, all the works that are there for us to do were prepared by God in advance. Can you raise your hand if you understand that completely and entirely with our human brains? God's laid them out before us. As one of my professors told me in college, there are so many good works that are laid out before us for us to do to God's glory and for the benefit of our neighbor that we can't do them all, we, by grace, get to choose. We have to make decisions. But we want to do it to his glory, whatever they are. You remember a Mary who six days before Jesus' death came and washed his feet with her hair, anointing him for death. 
you remember Joseph of Arimathea who took the body of Christ down from the cross and buried it in a tomb? These works they did to the glory of God for the benefit of neighbor, prepared in advance by God. But you don't have to do something special and amazing. You can be the one who scrubs the kitchen floor, who changes a baby's diaper, who shares a special lesson from the Bible with your kids or grandkids, who does, a work, does the work faithfully at their job. All of these things are works that God has prepared in advance for you to do. Now, good works are only good works if we seize them, if we take advantage of them. We can read about them in Scripture and say, oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to do good works. Good works don't get me to heaven. Good works I'm to do out of thanks to God for what he's done in Jesus already. But unless I do them, then they're not good works. Seize the opportunities, dear friends, that God places before us. The most profound work of all is still trying to reach a dead and dying world of sinners who still need Jesus. Don't be afraid to share your faith. It's what you and I cherish. It's what they need so desperately. God created you to do good works which he prepared in advance so that we can walk with him. That's our life. But our life isn't to your glory, not to my glory, to God alone. Alone be the glory. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding Keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We come, O Savior, to your throne to give you of your treasure, moved by your love which on the cross was given without measure. Your love for us paid out in blood purchased our salvation. Help then our love reflect your love till we live with you in heaven. Amen.
and we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love with which you loved us, for you did not spare your only begotten Son, but delivered him upon the cross for our sins. You were pleased even to forsake him for a time, so that with his suffering he might taste the very dregs of hellish anguish for us. To establish your everlasting friendship with us, you made him whom you declared to be your beloved son the object of your rejection. We ask you then, for Jesus' sake, do not be hostile toward us because of our sins, but be at peace. Oh, forgive us for the sake of his innocent suffering and death. And as once you sent your Son to be our Savior, send him to reign in our hearts through our faith. O oh, dearest Jesus, we confess that our sins too brought you to the cross where you suffered hell for us and every sinner. At your own invitation, we take refuge in your wounds and seek cleansing in your blood. By the sacrifice you made, stir us up to love you and to do good works. Give us patience to endure tribulations, strength to resist temptations, joy to overcome sorrows, love to replace bitterness, guidance to keep us on the path of righteousness, boldness to seek your help in prayer, and a will to seek the counsel of your holy word. May you ever be to us the light of salvation, especially when we pass through the dark shadows of death. O Holy Spirit, beloved author of our faith, call to our remembrance the sacrifice Christ made for us so that we do not fail to remember, so that we do not fall into unbelief and all manner of sin and vice. Open our mouths to bear witness to our Savior's name, open our hearts to give generously to the cause of Christian missions and to the relief of those who suffer want. Let the joy of our salvation in Christ fill our hearts and our minds until that day we rejoice to meet him in glory. Today we remember our sister Donna Alexander who last evening fell on some steps and broke her wrist. We pray that you would give her speedy recovery in the days and the weeks to come. Bless her with the peace that you alone can give. We pray for Kathy Colton, who will be undergoing surgery in the near future. We pray that you would allay her fears and grant her the grace to believe in you and to trust in your ever-present care. Guide and keep her and her husband, Richard, we pray also for Mike Lines, who is undergoing tests. We pray that you would bless him in his time of need. Continue to act as the good physician on his behalf and bless him with the comfort that you alone can provide through your word. We pray for Scott and Angela Meister celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary this coming week. We thank you for blessing this couple who long ago you brought together in holy matrimony. We pray that you would continue to sustain them and strengthen them in faith in you. And as they grow in their love for you through your holy word, may they also grow in their love for one another. Finally, we pray for the family and friends of Carmen Traub who passed away yesterday from lupus. We understand, O oh Lord, that Carmen underwent many, many difficulties in this life. She bore many crosses, yet we thank you that you brought her to faith in you through holy baptism many years ago, and now we know with certainty that she is at peace with you in the eternal kingdom that you have prepared for us and all believers. Continue to sustain and strengthen Carmen's family members and friends in your ever-present words of promise as Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Lord, hear us as we bring you our private petitions.
We humbly yet boldly lay our petitions before you, O Lord, for you are gracious and almighty. We pray that you will act according to your good and gracious will. Hear us also as we pray the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. sing the final hymn. again good morning. good morning thank you for joining us this morning what a blessing to have you with us and a special welcome to our visitors as well 
We're thankful you could be here, and we hope you can come again. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we go today. There will be fellowship at 10.30 if you'd like to stick around for a few minutes and say hello to one another. Also, uh, we'd like you to stay even longer if you're able for Bible study. There will also be uh, Sunday school, uh, at least for Mr. Kilberg's class. And the other Sunday school, I believe, is online yet. So you can see Carol, uh, uh, Carol Gibson for materials. Uh, there will be morning Bible study tomorrow. We'll continue our study of the Psalms at 1030. That's a hybrid class, online and in person. Uh, there will be a pastor circuit meeting on Tuesday. That's going to be at Bethlehem and Carmel from 11 to 230. And then you see the rest of the schedule there as well. Um, maybe I'll just note too, Wednesday is our fifth midweek Lenten service. And uh, we hope you can come and join us at 7 o'clock. Pastor Seth Bodie will be coming to be our guest pastor. He is the pastor at, at Bethlehem and Carmel. He also serves on the Board for Home Missions. He was recently appointed to that position. So he's also our shepherd on that board as well. Pastor Bodie came down also with our mission counselor yesterday uh, to visit with us uh, about our church. So we were very thankful for their guidance yesterday too. So that'll start at seven o'clock. We'll continue that theme, Hands of the Passion. And he'll be talking about the hands of Caiaphas. Uh, so, okay. Uh, uh, by the way, Bible study, men's Bible study on Saturday. And then the church council will be meeting at 10 o'clock on Saturday. If there's any items you would like the church council to consider, uh, please let us know. Let me know or let Kevin Willis know. He's the council president. There are the people that we prayed for. That list was extended uh, over the last few hours. So we continue to... Pray for all those people that we prayed for this morning. Oh, by the way, we've got, uh, I think Emma, Emma might be watching online. She is turning eight. Uh, let's see that. Oh, she did turn eight already, didn't she? No, what day is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, she turned eight a couple of days ago, yeah. And then Rachel Grease is here this morning. Uh, Rachel, we, we won't ask her age, but we know that she has a, 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 a a birthday on the 17th. She's probably, well, I'm even older than she is. So, <laughs> so I can say those things, right? Uh, let's sing uh, happy birthday to Rachel. And is there anybody else who would, uh, has a birthday today? Or this week? We'll sing to Emma. Emma? Yeah, we yeah. should sing to Emma. Okay. All right. <laughs> Emma's probably watching, you think? <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's sing uh, happy birthday, Emma and Rachel. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Emma and Rachel, happy birthday to you, God's blessings to you, God's blessings to you, God's blessings, Emma and Rachel, God's blessings to you. God's blessings, Rachel and Emma. Happy birthday to both of you. Um, there is our offering so far this year. We're thankful to our treasurer who gets these numbers to us each week. This is always running a couple of weeks behind, but uh, grateful to God for the gifts of his people. We mentioned the first thing already, midweek Lenten worship. By the way, if you're not able to join us on Wednesday nights, uh, we live stream them. You can join us live stream. We send out that link in the e-news uh, or, or an email uh, later on this week, and then you can also watch it on demand on YouTube, too, at any time that's convenient for you. Uh, spring cleaning, we're grateful for those who came for spring cleaning yesterday. Uh, and, oh, yes, that's right. The, the ladies' aid chairman had mentioned that I should take this off uh, the list because I believe they have deduced that everything is clean enough, that we haven't made a lot of mess in the last year. <laughs> so, uh, so we are... We're good to go, I think, with, especially we, we hire some people to help clean odds and ends around here too each week. So thank you uh, for your help. So there will be no cleaning on March 27th. Maybe we'll come up with something else to do on that day. Um, Bible study opportunities. We're starting a new Bible study this morning. We're going to study a book of the Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Uh, we'd love for you to come and, and join us for that. It's, uh, it's going to be entitled Christian Faithfulness. Uh, at least this first part will be from 1 Thessalonians. So I've got a Bible study prepared, and you're welcome to join us. 
Uh, Monday morning, we mentioned that one. Wednesday, we're not meeting until after Easter, and then men's Bible study coming up on the 20th. I meant to take that off, yes. Uh, John, John, maybe some of you got to watch uh, John's performance. It was, uh, it was very impressive. Uh, beautiful harmonies by gentlemen on the stage, including John, and uh, just a very impressive uh, show. In fact, I think he had to do some dancing in there too. Didn't you have to do some dance steps? That was very impressive, so. Guys and dolls, so. you. You ever listen to Guys and Dolls? You probably, there's a few familiar tunes in there too that you, you would enjoy. So thank you, John, for that. More details are coming out with the food drive uh, that's, that's coming up soon. Uh, there were meetings this past week with people who are helping to arrange the food items. We're, we're kind of coming up with that list, buying, purchasing food right now for that food drive. Tomorrow we're going to have a Zoom meeting with the Chief of Police of Greenwood and also someone from McFarling Foods. If you could help in any way, first of all, your prayers, uh, but also uh, would you please consider purchasing items, non-perishable items, which would go in those boxes in the back of the fellowship hall. If you don't wanna do shopping for items, non-perishable items, you, uh, we welcome monetary gifts as well. I believe uh, the police department is also going to put out a notice for gifts to be donated to. So this, this is a, a wonderful, uh, we're being encouraged to do this as missionaries too, to reach out to the community, to just be part of the community. And I, I see this as a wonderful way to be able to do that, to be part of our community. If you wanna help on that day, let us know that too. By the way, this is probably the biggest new item. Uh, we are seriously looking at putting the uh, items into sacks the night before. So Tuesday night, April 6th, a couple days after Easter, if you're around and you can come and join us, that would be great. And we'll have an exact hour for that because there's also a scheduled ladies meeting that evening as well. So we might meet a little bit before or just after that, or maybe somehow combine it, I don't know. But we'll talk about that later. But it looks like to save money, we're going to try and do that part ourselves. On top of that, maybe one more thing too, we're going to be getting boxes of perishable goods from the USDA, and these will supplement what we are giving to the people as well, along with the spiritual uh, materials that we hope to give them as well as we reach out to our neighbors and friends. Thank you to everyone who's participating or supporting uh, this outreach event. We really appreciate it, and that is a show of, of, of our love in Christ. We mentioned the Lord's Supper last time too. Uh, Holy Communion is going to be changed for April and May because of events that are coming up. In April, the first Sunday in April, we're hoping for some visitors on Easter Sunday. Um, and sometimes with communion and visitors, it, it can make it kind of a, a difficult situation at times. So we're moving it to the second and the fourth Sundays of April. Uh, in May, we're anticipating that uh, confirmation will be the fourth Sunday of May, so we would like to combine confirmation with Holy Communion as well. So those are the main reasons why we are switching to the second and fourth Sundays of April and May. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free uh, to, to talk to me or to a council member too. Of course, we're going to offer uh, Lord's Supper on Monday, Thursday, April 1st as well. Uh, Sunday school, uh, yes, we're planning for the pre-K and second uh, grade, through second grade to have their first class on May 2nd, in person, May 9th, I should say, May 9th. Uh, May 2nd will be a, an actual uh, uh, voters meeting, so May 9th is when that's going to begin. Another piece of outreach that we're doing is uh, postcards out into the community. Thank you for those who have stuffed bags, uh, door hanger bags. Uh, we, we've got many, many more that we can do. And if you're willing to uh, walk with me or walk on your own in your own neighborhood and just put something at somebody's door and, and welcome them to come and join us, we would appreciate that help too. Forwarding Christ, the magazine, the March issue is there. Pastor Joel Natsis uh, writes if, uh, or answers this question, if the Sabbath law no longer applies, why do I have to go to church? And he answers that very well on pages 26 and 27. So pick up an issue if you haven't done so. Meditational books are, are back there as well. Those daily devotions, help yourself to them. S 
uh, send one to a neighbor, pass it along. It's a way of showing the love of Christ with others too. Um, this is also to mention that there is going to be a Lutheran Women's Missionary Society rally. This is going to be held in Mansfield, Ohio, which is about three plus hours away from here. Uh, but it will be also offered online. And they've invited me to come and speak about Light of Life. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to sharing uh, about our mission here. Uh, so that will be on the Saturday after Easter, April 10th. And that will begin at 9.30 in the morning. And again, you can click on a link. I think maybe that link there, it's on the back of your worship folders too. I'll put it on mine as well. And uh, uh, you're welcome to join us for that, whether in person or online. Some of you got to meet this gentleman on Wednesday evening. Kevin got to meet him, I think, yesterday as we sat down with him. This is Pastor Wayne Olhorn. He was a longtime pastor in Colorado Springs, Colorado. He then took a call to near Vista, California, serving a church there, and now he's most recently taken the call to be our mission, our next mission counselor. He travels all over the United States. From here, from Indianapolis, he got on a flight yesterday and went to Tampa Bay. Uh, so he's trying to cover the, cover the Eastern time zone before he goes back to the Pacific time zone. But he's a, this is, in my opinion, it's one of the most demanding jobs in, 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 the, in our synod, uh, to be traveling, and uh, all the questions that he gets put to him. And, and, uh, but it's wonderful, I think Kevin understands too that the, the valuable information that, that the uh, Board for Home Missions and the mission counselors share with us in the mission uh, setting is, is just invaluable to us. So uh, this was taken at uh, Open Barrel. We went out after church for a quick bite to eat and, and was off to bed <laughs> after that. So. All right, uh, any other questions or uh, announcements? Yes, go ahead, Sarah. Uh, for the ladies, uh, we are planning to do the stripping of the altar on Monday, Thursday. So if any of the ladies would like to come to me and give me your name, I can assign them something nice and something for you ladies to do. Thank you very much, Sarah. And uh, if you don't mind, we'll just show right now the uh, March Wells connection. This is a little snippet about our church body. So. Let's do that. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. Did you know that the oldest Lutheran high school in the United States is Luther Preparatory School in Watertown, Wisconsin? But, of course, it's more than just a high school. Luther Prep has a mission of encouraging and preparing the next generation of Wells pastors, teachers, and staff ministers for 155 years and counting. At first glance, Luther Prep looks much like any top-tier high school, with quality instruction, state-of-the-art classrooms, and a full slate of extracurriculars. Right now I'm doing, I'm an RA in the dorms during study hall, I've got, I'm in the fall play, um, I'm playing football, I'm in the prep singers, I mean, I'm able to do all of that at the same time while also being around Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's the connection to Jesus that sets this school apart. Because LPS is designed to be a key step in a lifetime of service to God's people. A mission that's been unchanged for 155 years. And I think that's what, like, what's, what makes our Synod special because you see a consistency there and you see the same faith and you see the same passion for the Gospel. Because the students here come from all over the country and the world, most live in dormitories on campus. That might seem like a hardship, but it actually fosters maturity and builds even stronger ties between parents and children. You will actually feel that you are closer to your child after the prep experience and closer to your child for the rest of his or her life. My faith has grown so much that I can have these higher level conversations with them about like God and thoughts that I'm having. Living on campus also builds deeper friendships with like-minded young people who encourage each other in their Christian faith. It's a truly incredible experience. You'll see, you'll see not only 
uh, your faith growing, you'll be able to see the faith within your friends growing too, which is an incredible thing to witness. It just makes it so much easier to be away and like then you don't even realize that you're gone and it's just, this becomes the home basically. Previously, their place of worship had of course been their primary. In a world that seems especially unstable this school year, it's comforting to know that the next generation of pastors, teachers, and staff ministers are as committed as ever to bringing the gospel of Christ to a world in need. They realize there are a lot of things going on in the world right now that show even greater the need that, that we have for a Savior. That need for people to go proclaim the Christ publicly in the classroom and from the pulpit will always be there and it's just very evident today. Currently, students at Luther Prep come from 25 states and six countries. Diversity that adds to our strength as we reach out in Jesus' name to people across cultures and around the world. With more than 400 students, Luther Prep's enrollment remains strong, preparing the new generation of faithful leadership for our congregations and schools. is blessed with two schools, two high schools that are supported by our synod. Some of our mission offerings go to these schools. One is Luther Prep, which you just saw in Watertown, Wisconsin. Anybody know where the other one is? Leah can't answer. Oh, oh Leah, 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 and Leah can't answer because they're both, yeah. It's, oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's in Saginaw. Yeah, Michigan Lutheran Seminary is not really a seminary of training pastors. It used to be years ago and they just kept the name. It's actually a high school like Luther Prep. So, something to think about for our young people as well. God be with you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.